I always enjoyed studying Plato, Aristotle, um, you know, playwrights, Aeschylus, that kind of thing. Um, I enjoy the emphasis they had on the mind, the living the, uh, the contemplative life, um, and the food. I mean, the book is really about outsiders in the sense that the University of Chicago Press asked me to write it, and my very first thought was, mm, but I live in Northbrook and I grew up in Cleveland. So I wanted to write a book that hadn't been written before, and I thought, well, you know, go with your liability, being an outsider, because I knew if I wrote a book saying, hi, I'm a Chicagoan and here's the real Chicago, you know, I can hear my readers, this chorus of sarcasm in my head, and that they would say, no, you're not. So I figured if I started saying, no, I'm not, but here's how I'm trying, um, and a central character uh, became Maria Pappas, the, uh, the Cook County treasurer, because the story that I tell about my life is I come to Chicago, I get a job, and then I bring my brother from Japan here, and he gets a job with Maria Pappas. And I explain her whole life. I mean, part of the, part of the book is about coincidences, and it's about how your, your whole life is affected by things you have no control over. Um, and the, the Greek immigrant experience is, is perfect for that. And the reason there are so many Greeks or were in Chicago is because the Turks were so horrible. You know, you'd think that wouldn't be a good thing, but it ended, it made them come here. There's a part where I go, I kind of leapfrog back through history. One thing, you know, when I, when I arrive, when anyone arrives anywhere, they feel like they just missed it. Like they just missed the golden age and now they're kind of into the lousy age where things just aren't as wonderful as they used to be because you hear these stories. So in the beginning of the book, I start to hop frog back in time. And every time I land on, you find people talking about how the, the golden age was just before. Okay, and I end up in 1833, three months after uh, Chicago declared itself a town. And I'm with this guy named Charles Fenno Hoffman, who is coming from New York on a horse. And he stops a few miles outside of Chicago on this frigid New Year's Eve, and he's in this hut on Lake Michigan talking to people coming from Chicago. And they're telling him about the wonders and the money to be made and everything. And he's thinking, oh, if only I was in Chicago a year ago. And here's a man, he hasn't even got there yet. It's 1833, it's been a town for three months. And so I think that really illustrated the feeling that I think everyone who comes here has to realize that, that they didn't really miss this special time, that they're creating their own special time. Give